Here we're looking at the catalog management portion of Microsoft Purview. Within the catalog management section, you are going to have your data owners and your data stewards set up and establish accountability for data, the knowledge around your data to make sure that it's understandable and usable, and pick which data assets are actually going to be data products that are consumable and have the most value to be governed. Starting with the governance domain, we have the ability to create a hierarchy of domains and establish how do these domains work with each other to govern your data estate. So as we look at the sustainability domain, we can see that we have different types of domains, such as regulatory domains, line of business domains, functional unit domains like sales and human resources, or data domains like customer or product. And the intent of the governance domain is to establish the accountability for who owns the data and who's going to be responsible for ensuring it's appropriately governed. As a central data team, you'll come in and create your domain and appoint a data governance domain owner. So the domain owner is going to be the key point of federation that is accountable for the others that come in and work within this domain. That domain owner will also establish who are the data product owners, which are the data experts that come and build out your data products, and the data stewards, which are the business experts that come in and add glossary terms, CDEs, and build out the rest of the knowledge around the data to make sure others understand it and can use that data effectively. You can also use observability here to go through and see how is your domain structured and what does it actually already contain. So here we see sustainability is a domain within corporate functions and that it has a few different data products with different data assets that are included in it. So here we can see a summary of what is happening at the data product level or on an individual data asset and start to understand what is the data and what is the, the current status of the data that I'm using. Now, when we talk about what all makes up the governance domain, we have a few core concepts that your data stewards and data product owners will define to make sure that others can find the right data for their use cases and that they can understand and use that data effectively while making sure it's always remaining governed. So here within data products, we're going to look at the different dashboards and reports, your master and reference data, your ML models, anything that needs to be governed and others want to be able to come and discover can become a data product. So here we're looking at a corporate missions report that takes data from all across your company like HR and IT in different data states, whether it's Databricks or Snowflake or Fabric, and brings all of that data together into a product to show others how can they understand what is happening within the corporate emissions reporting and how can they dig in even deeper if they need to go look at what's happening to some of this data. So if we click on any specific data product or data asset here, you will be able to see uh, the details about what is happening within it, what is the current status of the data quality, what is the lineage for that specific asset and how is it tied to all of the different things that are happening across your data estate. Data products are also tied to key glossary terms that show you what information does a user need to know when they're starting to get into this data space. So when we talk about sustainability, they're going to want to understand what do carbon emissions mean and how does it impact my business or how does it connect to my data to understand if we're talking about carbon emissions, how do I effectively communicate with data for this specific topic? Similarly, we'll also see connections out to our critical data elements and OKRs. Once you have your data products, uh, you'll be able to come and add additional other areas here, such as glossary terms that will help to explain the high level topics around the this data space that you're governing. So if we want to dig into what are carbon emissions and give a deeper shared understanding of what this means to users of the data, what are common acronyms uh, or related terms that are in use, and then what are the data products that are connected to it? So that way I can go and start to better manage all of my carbon, carbon emissions data. 
within glossary terms. You can also use get suggested terms to understand and have AI help propose new glossary terms for you to see what are some of those things that you might want to include or discuss within your sustainability domain. Other than glossary terms, we have two other concepts here. OKRs are gonna be your objectives and key results that help show others what is most important to you within sustainability or within any domain. And what is the specific goal that you're trying to accomplish? So becoming carbon neutral against a 2020 baseline is a goal that we want to see happen by a specific target date. And within that, we have a couple of key measurements that we're looking to achieve. These measurements help to show others how are we showing that we are progressing against our goals. And with that, how do we use data to help measure or impact our objectives, helping to bring users back from looking directly down at detailed data up to what is the business value of this data and how should I be thinking about the importance of this data when I'm prioritizing my work or looking to improve some of the data that I'm working on. Again, the OKRs will help to bring back that business value of the data so that others understand what, how, what data to prioritize, but we also have critical data elements that help to focus more on what data is most important to make sure is continuously controlled and always has consistent understanding across your entire data state. So here we'll have logical columns that are being applied to all of your data wherever it fits in uh, your data state. Here we're looking at emissions factors, which talk about a specific field in your data that shows on many different assets. So here we can see this emissions factor has many different names or formats of the same name, but it can exist in Fabric and Snowflake, Databricks, Google BigQuery, and in many, many places across your, your data state. You can start to map these critical data elements and show where do you have this type of data? What does it mean to you as a company? And how should it be best controlled or applied? You can also start to build connections to glossary terms to show how this emissions factor data is also related to your carbon emissions topic. So that way users get a better understanding of the whole when they're looking at your data. When we look at things like emissions factors or CDEs and other areas, we have the ability to also start to use them to help scale our governance. So we can apply data quality rules to say that the data must always be text or it must always be a populated field to make sure that no matter where my data exists, I'm getting good data quality. Similar to data quality, uh, but here when you apply managing policies, these management policies will enable you to have consistent access based off of the context of the data. So here we're looking at a manager approval must be required and everywhere where this data pol or this critical data element has been applied to all of these columns on all of these data products, it will enforce that that manager approval is already applied. This is how we're making your metadata more active to ensure that based off of the context of your data, it always has the right policies being applied to it. So now when we come back up to the governance domain, you can see that you can manage policies at many different levels and on many different objects here within the governance domain. So regardless of the context of your data, you can make sure it's always getting the right policies and start to scale out how you are governing your data. So glossary terms, critical data elements, governance domains can all apply your policies and keep your active governance in place as teams start to come and curate, manage, and consume your data products.